us with the first session of today. Welcome, Chair Lady. Good morning. Women, we can speak louder. Good morning. Isn't it nice to be a woman in construction today? So, our CS, Ministry of Roads and, Tra and Transport, Honorable Kipchumba Murkomen, the Presidential Advisor on Women's Women Rights, Honorable Harriet Chigai, the Principal Secretary, State Department for Transport, Mr. Mohamed Dagar, Principal Secretary, State Department um, for Roads, Engineer Mbukwa. We have representation from the PS, State Department for Housing, um, State Dep Department for Works, State Department for MSMEs, and State Department for Gender and Affirmative Action. We also have here with us a representative from World Bank, a representative from the Council of Governors. We have the Acting Chair of NCA National Construction Authority, Advocate Marcy. Um, all invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning once again. It is my honor and humble duty to invite you all to the first ever Women in Construction Forum that is being held here today at Barabara Plaza. On my own behalf, as a woman in construction, being an architect, being a manufacturer of roofing uh, products, working within the steel industry, um, this is especially special because as women, we have come a long way and we have a long way to go. The whole spectrum or ecosystem of construction for women cuts across built environment professionals from the architects, the engineers, quantity surveyors, construction managers, contractors, um, our technicians, all across our fundies, our installers, plumbers, the trades. We have women representation across the whole spectrum of construction. It is especially special that women are now starting to get recognized and being given support to come out and participate because it is our right to participate in this industry. Um, without too much, today is not really our day. We want to sit, we want to listen, we want to engage. We want to have a very, very um, good day where we are open, we want to discuss our issues, our challenges, um, so that then we can start um, creating a roadmap for how we can increase participation for women in our industry. We also hope that one of the outcomes of this day is to start a mentorship program for all women across the construction ecosystem. So mine is to thank you and to thank the government. You can see the leadership of our ministries and the president, office of the president is here, um, meaning that they take this day with extreme importance. So ladies, it is our time to speak up, speak out, and for those of us who have been in the industry for some time, to become intentional in how we act to support women in construction. So that's it for me today. I hope that we'll have a very engaging day and we look forward to open and, um, on open and honest participation because we have to do this ourselves today to chart the future for our women who are still in university, who are still in primary school, so that they can also opt to take up the profession, any profession across the built environment and in construction. So that's it for me, I want to hand back to our MC, she didn't introduce herself. Engineer Julia, maybe you can introduce yourself. 
so that then we can also know her. Thank you very much. I wish you all a pleasant day. Thank you for coming. Sorry, so I have been corrected. Thank you, Julia, engineer. It is also my honor to invite our PS for roads, PS engineer Mbugwa, to come and address us and give us his remarks. Welcome. Thank you very much, uh, our session chair, Chair Ken Ha, this morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Uh, in the interest of time, our Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Roads and Transport, Honorable Kipchuba Molkomen, the President's Advisor on Women's Rights, Honorable Harriet Shigai, colleagues PSS that have accompanied us this morning, CEOs and uh, DGs from various institutions, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. Like you've just heard, my name is Engineer Bogwa, the Principal Secretary in the State Department of Roads. So ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pressure to welcome you all to this year's Women in Construction Forum right here at Barabara Plaza, the home of our road agencies, namely Kenha, Kera, Kura. We heartily, we heartily thank the organizers of this forum for choosing this venue for this important forum. Our cabinet secretary, as we celebrate women in construction, we take note of the progress made in creating the right constitutional and legal framework to enable women thrive in their chosen fields and trades. However, from statistics, a lot needs to be done to achieve gender parity in the predominantly male industry to achieve the third uh, gender rule in constitutional requirements. As we begin the conversation today, it is important to note that uh, women comprise of less than 10% of accredited site workers and supervisors in our construction industry. Further, less than 8% of the professional engineers uh, constitute, uh, engineers constitute of uh, women in various categories, some 15, others 12, others 8. Like you heard, Waziri, in another discussion, in the consulting firms, there are only four. State Department of Roads is ensuring that agencies strive to ensure compliance with the requirements when planning for procurement of works and services under the AGPO laws. Today, therefore, as we welcome you to this forum, we look forward to hearing from participants on steps that can facilitate policy makers and in particular our cabinet secretary further to enhance the business and professional environment for our women in the construction industry. So once again, uh, ladies and gentlemen, I welcome you all to have a fruitful day. And uh, with a few remarks, because of the interest of time, Waziri, uh, allow me to call our PS, my counterpart PS, uh, in the State Department of Transport to greet the participants and also uh, say a word or two to this forum. Karibu, PS Daga. Tumpige makofi akija.
Uh, wow. I, I hadn't had a full picture of the auditorium. Uh, it is intimidating. <laughs> as uh, men, because we are always used to see a very different type of setup, uh, where in any meeting, even if it's a meeting of chefs, you will see more men than women. But uh, my name is uh, Mohamed Daga, and I'm the PS Transport. Uh, it's really a pleasure to be here, uh, alongside all this very beautiful talent uh, that is, uh, has gathered uh, in uh, in one room, and I'm really here also as a participant to benchmark from roads, because if we get it right, I so believe in roads, then we can also enhance women's involvement in transport. Also, I believe, yes, we have pilots here and there, uh, but we want to believe that the next operator of the SGR can be run also by women. We also want to strongly believe that uh, a woman can uh, an entire vessel. That is one of the hardest things I have ever come across. But you see, women are meant to address hard things. And I'm saying that because I know and I'm a man. If there is, you see, like something like pain. Men can't handle pain. Let me just be very honest. So isn't it? If there is something that is a strong conviction that I have that is extremely ungendered is work or profession. Uh, I think any profession uh, is an ungendered task. It does not matter. Uh, and I'm saying this with no biasness. It does not matter that you have to put on makeup in the morning or not. It can be done. And uh, I'm not saying this uh, because, you know, uh, of the old cliche that, you know, if you want something done better, give it to a woman. There have been all that. And I'm a strong supporter uh, of all that. But we want to see women in many other forums. And I know the CS is here. You know, we have women, and I know my CS is here, but we can also have women from other spectras. And we are going to appreciate that. And my message really today is that uh, women need to tell their own story. And I think that is what has been lacking. And forums like this are avenues for those action points, for women to tell it as is. Because the achievements of women in the world is just that it has not been documented. Uh, we are all product of women. And forums like this are what uh, we will ensure some of those adages actually come to life. So P.S. I am here uh, just to finish where I started, also to really learn uh, what, uh, what all this is all about. Uh, it's also, you know, uh, very interesting to see engineers uh, as women in our country. And you know, we are used to set the pace and set the trend in the region. The next day you will hear is that Uganda, Rwanda, Burundi are benchmarking on what Kenya is doing from this forum. So I wish you the very best, and I'm really looking forward to see what will be the results on this. We'll follow up with the Office of the President, uh, the very competent Harriet uh, here, who will help us, you know, move forward. As and Tenisana. Thank you. Tumukia Makofi Mazuri. Let me also take this opportunity to invite my colleague PS of SMEs, who we call the PS for Hustler. Hustlers. Tumukia Makofi.
Thank you so much, my colleague, PS for Rods, uh, engineer. It's called MSME, engineer, it's MSME, micro, small, and medium enterprises. Development, this is a new state department. This is the first time we are having such a state department since independence. So CSS, led by the CS for Roads and Transport, CS uh, Kipchumba, my good friend, the advisor on women's rights and affairs, and I want to believe and economic development, CS Harriet, also my friend, my very good friend Daga PS for transport, and all powerful women who are daring in this sector that for a long time has been seen as a sector for masculinity for men. Hamjambo. So it gives me great honor this morning, and I want to thank the CS for transport, CS Murukome. To be honest, I learned about this this morning when you posted on our wall, imagine. And then I quickly opened the, you know, the program, and I saw myself in the program. <laughs> and I wanted to ask there, and then I said, no, 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 let me just, I went into Harriet's inbox. I said, my sister, I'm on the program. <laughs> what is this? But nevertheless, because I'm a hustler, I said, I'm going to put aside everything else. <laughs> and I will tell you why. Why I had to do that? Because I'm one of the um, strong advocates of women in this sector because I believe it has the great potential to create more jobs in term and businesses for our people and for MSMEs. The MSME sector, as you all know, is the one which is powering our economy. And by the way, 98% of all our businesses in this country fall under MSME. It's only 2% which fall under large enterprises or multinationals. And uh, building and construction is our key priority value chain as Kenya Kwanza administration. And how we are selecting these value chains, we are looking at their potential, one, in creating jobs, two, in generating revenue, and therefore helping also to bring down the cost of living. And also three, we are looking at their potential in terms of helping to crowd in foreign uh, exchange uh, revenue, and also to champion industrialization. Last Friday, we did groundbreaking of the first county aggregation and industrial park. And during my remarks, I requested the contractors that 50% of all the tenders in terms of supplies, of construction material, should go to youth, women, and persons with disability. We also went further because I remember uh, when we were doing the groundbreaking in Isili, we also, during that time, we witnessed the signing of the women fundies in construction <laughs> with the developer and who pledged that again 50% of all the jobs in those sites affordable housing sites will go to women funders. And, and when all this happened, I see a lot of brighter future. I see opportunity. Because CSS, if it's about economy, it's about a woman. If it's about economy, it's about a woman. 60 years down the line, we can talk about political independence, political freedom, social independence, and so many other things. 
we are struggling with economic independence because women have not been at the forefront. It is our challenge this time round to do all it takes to help this country now achieve economic independence. So my remarks will be very few. I don't have even a written speech I would have loved, but I just want to share with you the opportunities which we have. I know the greatest barrier has been financing. And now, through the various commitments that Our Excellency President William Ruto has done, has, has put in place, we are going to avail specific financing targeting this sector. So that's why I had to come here to give you this good news, that especially women, if you are a young woman, uh, and you are a youth, we have financing in the Youth Enterprise Fund, which we have now re-engineered. You can be able to borrow facilities up to about five million that you can be able to. So if you have a tender, five million can help, isn't it? We begin from there. If you are a woman, again, we have financing in KI, which will be able to support you up to the tune of 20 million. Again, through the Micro Small Enterprise Authority, we have CIDCs, these are called constituency industrial development centers across the country in each and every constituency. We are equipping them with modern technology, with machinery that speaks to opportunities in each and every value chain. Here in Kariobangi, we have close to four acres of CIDC, and we want to prioritize building and construction value chains, the metal works, the wood works. So if you are MSME at Okiwa Mdogomdogo Pale, we will have a space for you. You can come and do standardization of your, your doors, beat doors, beat windows, whatever you want to do, and supply. So those are the things that you are trying to do to support. But I want also to pose a challenge here. I want to say, even as we, we make sure that we negotiate for you to get a sizable market, especially beginning with the kipes. I know next week again we'll be launching or groundbreaking at least two kipes. We want to make sure that women get a, a bigger share. But how can we deepen this to that woman in the village? How do we take this? Unajua kuna mamamboga ata kwa construction. Siwako. How do we take? So help us through your networks. Let's broaden these networks so that we reach out those women, we organize them in formidable entities. Na mimi hapa na youth fund your group, mimi nita wapanga panga, wamama ata waku sweep, sweep to say they are in construction. They don't need to be engineers. Do they need to be engineers? I walk around these, uh, you know, these construction sites. You find women with walkie-talkie. You find women that are the ones who are doing painting. Let's help them, put them into groups. Through Hustler Fund, I'm willing to give them support. We register them in association. If the plumbers, we can buy for them plumbing materials. We can buy for them painting brushes. And that way, we will be enabling them to take advantage of these opportunities. So finally, as I finish, I just want to, to also talk about the issue of policy and regulatory framework, and I'm happy today here we have all agencies, as they've said, this Barabara, you know. Let's also um, try to be a bit flexible, especially uh, in Akwanga in Guinea, NCA1, NCA, how do you call them? NCA1, NCA2. NCA3, NCA, all those, eh? I mean, if we agree that we want to promote women, let's do this way. A woman who has NCA6 should be considered to be having NCA4. <laughs> Isn't it? Let's break that barrier in terms of regulatory. And then on the working side, also let's see how to improve. We women, we want to remain women. We want to remain uh, 
you know, wives. But you see, if you don't even put in those construction site a kakona where I can nurse my baby, you are telling me if you are in construction, stop giving birth. Are you seeing there? We need child care centers around there. We come with the babies, we put them there, we do our things, we put on overalls and those things we usually put on. So I think these are the conversations that we need to have. Beginning today, let's push them forward so that we can create an enabling environment and help create jobs. We are aiming at, crea at, at creating five million new jobs in the next five years and this sector, this sector must give us at least 30% of those jobs in the next five years. Thank you so much. I'm sure you have now interacted with uh, my colleagues, PSS. Let me request all the DGs and CEOs to come over. DGs and CEOs to come over. Take the shortest time possible, if you can. You can say they have very many women among them. <laughs> so I will allow them to introduce themselves, their names, and the institution that uh, they represent as they walk back to their seats. Start with yourself. I thank you, P.S. I would like to of course, the protocols are our CS for roads and transport, special advisor to the president on, uh, uh, let, me, let me read it properly, women's rights uh, advisor. My name is Engineer Margaret Ugai. I'm the registrar and CEO, Engineers Board of Kenya. And one thing to say is this is a very, very exciting, exciting day. Sorry, I forgot PS. I would like to also recognize you, the two PSs who are sitting there. Thank you very much for this day. We've been looking forward to it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, PS. My name is Engineer Ndungu, the DG Kenha. Thank you, uh, PS. My name is Engineer Cyrus Kenoti, Director General Kenya Urban Roads Authority. Uh, thank you, P.S., uh, standing on the protocols already established. My name is Engineer Morris Akech, the Executive Director, National Construction Authority, and the Registrar of Contractors, including women contractors in this room today. Uh, just because you've been given a challenge from the P.S. in terms of how we can have incentives for women, I want to confirm that currently we are in the process of reviewing the evaluation criteria for contractors and maybe that's a good contribution. And the board member is here, uh, the, the chair of the board is here and she has listened. And I'm sure when I present that to the board, they will accommodate. So the resolutions from here will be very important. And where I regulate has the highest number of women, uh, women in the industry. In every other sector, in uh, construction workers, they are both below 5%, but in the business of construction, I have the highest, 15%. We can bring it up to 30%. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. Rashid Mohammed, Director General, Kenya Roads Board. Good morning, everyone. I'm Engineer Philemon Kandia, Director General, Kenya Rural Roads Authority. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, our CEOs and Director Generals. I'm sure we have chairs of certain organizations. Are they here? Chairmen and chairwomen? We have none. Oh, yes. Would you want to talk from where you are or you want to come over? Your choice. If 
I don't come, people will say, um, you are discriminating against women. <laughs> Honorable CS Murkomen, Honorable Harriet Chikai, PS Transport, PS Roads, PS uh, MSMEs, all chair, fellow chairpersons, DGs, all protocols observed. My name is Masi Okiro. I'm the acting chair of the board of the National Construction Authority, and we are happy to be here. And I join sentiments with uh, Engineer Ogai. I know we had a conversation during our awards last year to see how to bring this, um, uh, the women basically under one roof in construction. But um, Harriet Chigai, my senior in the profession, CS, uh, has brought us together. So we are here. We support every initiative that will be discussed here. We're looking to see more women involved in this sector. And uh, I must highlight that uh, as much as everything is bottom up, let's also aim for the top. So qualified women contractors, my clarion call is that at NCA, so long as you're qualified, we will actually uh, put you in the top NCA um, levels where you'll get the good contracts. Thank you again, CS, for putting us together, and uh, I look forward to having a very fruitful conversation. Thank you. Thank you very much, Tumpilia Makofi. We have representation from uh, consulting firms. We have representative from the Organization for Consulting Firms. We have representative from IEK. Are you here? Come over just to let people know that you exist. If your minute is over before you come, then I'll move to the next session. To Apigia Makofi Wakija. Thank you very much. All protocols observed. My name is Engineer Jane Mutulili. I am the Honorary Secretary of the Consulting Engineers of Kenya. I just want to say that uh, Everybody I've had, Engineer Ketch is saying that he's doing very well with 15%. You're actually doing very badly. Um, for the consulting firms, unfortunately, I think we are about 14, 14 consulting engineers, registered consulting engineers, women by EBK, and we are only four consulting firms uh, out of, I think now we are 100 and something, at least in ASIC. So we really are not advantaged, and it is unfortunate that any consulting engineer, any contractor, a woman who is not having a job, I think we are not doing very well. Thank you very much. Yes, uh, good morning, everyone. I think in the interest of time, I'll stand on the existing protocol, uh, but I must acknowledge the CS and uh, the PSS who are here this, this morning. Uh, I want to just start by saying thank you so much to our host, the, the road agencies and the State Department of Transport. Um, my name is Engineer Grace Mudoni Kagondu. I'm the first Vice President of the Institution of Engineers of Kenya. I'm very honored that IEK has been invited to participate in this particular event. Uh, we have uh, a committee called Women, uh, Women Engineers Committee at IEK. And I want to believe most of the women here are members of that uh, particular committee. Uh, I just want to mention, because I have uh, not much time, I just want to mention that we have a Women Engineer Summit coming up in November. We can continue this discussion after this, and I'll be making a presentation. I'll be talking more from the standpoint of IEK. Thank you very much. You can see IEK members can even go with people's bulletins. Just clap for her as she sit down. I'm sure because of the interest of time, we'll move into the next session and uh, welcome the presidential. Thank you. Let's now welcome the president's advisor on women's rights, Honorable Harriet Shigai, to make her remarks. Good morning. When I look on the other side, you guys look a little bit gloomy. And this is supposed to be a very, very, very happy morning. Good morning. That sounds better. Um, <clears throat> C.S. Murkomen, my classmates. 
I can confirm I went to school today. And we can also confirm today we've made our professor of law, C.S. Kindiki, very proud. Um, <clears throat> ladies, allow me to say this. Our lives are usually under construction. We must strive to improve. And that's just how it is. Every single day, we are constructing, we are building ourselves. So mine is to thank the organizing committee that patched this up together very fast, together with the leadership of CS Murkomen, the PSS present. Mangeni, you are not late. In fact, you just got here on time. And that's just how women are. As I said, we are in construction every single day. An undeniably truth that may be said about the Kenyan women without any fear of contradiction is this. Regardless of the regional and socioeconomic distinctions that are used to describe us, we all want the same things for ourselves, our families, our nation. We fiercely believe that we deserve equal access to the means and opportunities to actualize these aspirations. One such aspiration is in the construction industry. We gather here today to affirm that we have embarked on a journey and there shall be no turning back. I'm grateful to the Ministry of Transport under the leadership of C.S. Murkomen, who together with our office here, we bear witness to this momentous time for the women in construction. This is an inclusive, participatory, and collaborative forum, a forum that represents collective action in transforming the construction sector so that women are involved fully. Whether we like to acknowledge it or not, the construction industry, like any other male-dominated sector of economy, has changed globally to accommodate women. There are a lot more women on site now than there used to be there before. My friend says it was quoted not to be space for women with lipstick, and I added high heels. The, constru <clears throat> the construction sector contributes to more than 5.6% to the Kenya's GDP, and it impacts on our economy in general, cutting through each and every sector. It touches all aspects of the country, suffices to say, if we get construction right, we'll have given the country a launch pad into greater heights on economic development. I'm delighted to note amongst you, not only engineers, contractor, contractors, quantity surveyors, artisans, but also women of conviction, women of innovation, indomitably spirits with high performing and high achieving professionals capability of driving the construction industry to greater heights. It is on the backs of your achievements and millions of other women beyond this hall today that we are literally building a better country and making inroads in gender equality and accelerating the gender parity on matters economic development. Globally, gender-related cultural beliefs shape perceptions of suitable roles for women. Occupations predominantly held by men are frequently perceived as physical strenuous or mentally intricate. We've all heard about that. However, this notion is unequivocally shattered by the presence of female professionals in the industry and the women, especially in Mijengo, who have become an integral part of the construction industry. This forum comes at an opportune time as some of the statistics in place are not very encouraging. A report released in February last year by Delberg puts <coughs> the women in construction at 3% artisans within the country. The report shows female engineers registered by the Engineering Board of Kenya is at 7.3%, female contractors at 15.5%, uh, and female quantity surveyors registered at 
globally only 13% of all construction companies are owned by women. You see, it's not a Kenyan problem, is it? Deducing from these statistics, women need to play a role that improves their livelihoods, not as part of the general workforce, but also equally as part of the leadership that steers the direction of the industry. The private sector and the government must join hands in ensuring sufficient tutoring and empowering of women. The bottom-up economic transformation agenda concern with the connection between productivity, labor, and economic transformation is easily understood in terms of job creation. Higher incomes, savings, investments as the drivers of rapid economic growth, a big part of the plan on women is enshrined in various policy recommendations, planned projects, some of which include the government's commitment on the implementation of two-third gender rule, and it has overseen a number of policies to support women in the workforce. The government's agenda on housing and settlement has opened doors for those skilled in construction work. The government agenda on technical and vocational education and training serves to advantage of young women and girls interested in being in the construction industry. Government is currently constructing over 250,000 plus houses annually. And this is an area where women can leverage and be able to um, get into the construction industry. The government has stepped into the harness, promote and improve the number of women working in building and construction. And the construction industry is undoubtedly growing rapidly. And this is an area that we as women need to tap into. We are talking about greening of the construction industry, smart cities. This is a global discussion. The question is, where are the women? There's a lot of potential, and my request is that we open up our aspirations and broaden our skills, enable for us to leverage. We also have innovation and ICT. We should be able to skill ourselves for us to be able to leverage and compete within the market. To address these systematic problems, I wish to propose three-pronged approach. The industry must attract more women or girls to take up construction as a career. The industry must recruit more women and encourage women within the um, Tibet sector to take up certain trainings that will leverage them within the construction industry. For instance, I was talking to a professor and he was telling me there are very few plumbing companies owned by women in the country. Finally, the industry must retain the few women who are already in the construction industry. The question then is how? I'm sure you have all the answers and we shall discuss today. Let's not view construction as just a smashing down concrete walls. For example, if young girls in schools don't see the construction industry and trade as a viable career option, they won't pursue pathways into construction. If they don't see the role models like them and receive encouragement to explore careers in construction, they are lost within the industry. Thus, we need to, we need transformations in societal attitudes towards gender stereotypes, gender biases, gender inequality, and gendered violence. The changes we need to see are not just in the construction industry, but also within our safe spaces. Currently, Women make up 30% of engineering students in university. This goes to show the interventions in place which are paying off and at some point will break even if we keep creating and implementing favorable policies. But we need to build on the skills. Research and markets indicate that construction industry in the country will be on constant growth at an annual average of 6.1 until the year 2025 and some research institutions say as high as 7%. So the question is, how do we accelerate this? These insights tally with those of another report released early last year by Institute of Women and Policy Research. Um, industry which we need about 62%, sorry, 62,000 new hires every month for the next three years to meet the growing house demands. There's therefore a dire need for more construction workers going into the future. In conclusion, as you engage the government, 
the private sector and other stakeholders, I would like to put it to you to open up opportunities for one another, build each other and believe in each other. This forum sets the tone for us to be bold, to tackle the hard issues so that the Kenyan construction industry becomes a self-welcoming and rewarding workspace for all people regardless of their gender. They say, never underestimate the power of a woman in construction. This is because construction is not just about bricks and mortar, it's about the character and resilience to overcome challenges, which is in women, naturally. Simply put, we should believe in women and their ability to provide value in the construction industry. The strongest actions for a woman is to love self be herself, and shine amongst those who never believed she can. Could, could, <clears throat> let us, uh, could let the shape the future for others, and most specifically, let us write our own story. Thank you all for your time, and I wish you an amazing forum, and with good results. Asante Nisana. <laughs> At this juncture, let me invite the representative from the World Bank. Come over, introduce herself. The representation from the World Bank. Karibu tumpigia makofi ndiyo. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, the Cabinet Secretary, Ministry of Roads and Transport, Advisor on Women Rights, uh, Ms. Harriet Chigai, uh, Principal Secretary is present, all protocols observed. My name is Judith Kerich, and I'm here um, on behalf of Ms. Lillian Kahindo, who is the co-task team leader for transport under the World Bank. Uh, she was unable to come, and so I will uh, read her brief speech, and I will introduce myself at a later forum when I wear another hat. Um, this is a brief speech, but um, I will just uh, read it, and just for information, 22% uh, of the World Bank financing goes to the transport sector, and therefore we hope that women can participate in that 22%, which is about uh, roughly $2 billion. So the World Bank is honored to be represented in this Women in Construction Forum which is in line with the World Bank gender strategy and goes a long way in working out areas to close the gap to the journey of gender equality in the construction sector in Kenya. The World Bank's gender strategy 2016 to 2023 emphasized measurable results based on data and evidence on what works. It is positioned that the World Bank to be a more effective actor in tackling specific gender gaps in the four pillars of the strategy, generating higher ambition for policies and operations. Pillar number one looks to improve human endowments that is in health, education, and social protection, addressing the sticky first generation gaps in health and education. Pillar number two, removing constraints for more and better jobs lifting constraints to increase the quantity and quality of jobs, and closing earning gaps with a focus on women's labor force participation, occupational sex segregation, care service, and safe transport. Okay. Okay. Um, so under the Horn of Africa Gateway Development Project, one of the activities under the sector will be in the preparation of the gender action plan in the transport sector, 
which will look to address the constraints, the challenges, and create more opportunities for women. We wish you all the best in the deliberation today and look forward to discussing the outcome of this forum in the future. Signed, World Bank Group. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Madam Judith. Thank you so, so much. I think at this juncture we will all arise and invite our Cabinet Secretary to come over and give his speech and remarks. Tumpige Makofi Akija. Karibu Waziri. Karibu, Karibu. Thank you very much, uh, P.S. Asante San. Um, good morning, everybody. Please be seated. Sorry for P.S. making you to stand. You didn't need to. Unless it was part of the health break. Uh, I, ha I haven't reached the status of being stood for. Um, first of all, uh, I'd like to acknowledge the presence of the, my friend, Harriet Chigai, who is the President's Advisor on Women's Rights, the PS Roads, the PS Transport, the PS MSME, the Director Generals who are here, the chairs of the various boards, uh, the consulting engineers, um, contractors who are here, and all the distinguished guests. Good morning. Good morning. You actually don't have the advantage of being on this other side. You look very beautiful. I, 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 very, very beautiful. In fact, I think this is how government meetings should be. <laughs> I actually wish all the meetings were like this because those who work with me at the ministry headquarters know that I have consistently complained that every time I call for a meeting, it's like a men's club. And um, I remember in one of the cabinet meetings, I, I uh, spoke about my ministry and, and how it is poorly uh, represented. It has a poor representation of women. And the women CSS were so surprised. I was also surprised myself why they were surprised. Uh, because I think there is a feeling that if it is us, the men, we don't notice that we have a problem with the question of gender uh, representation in our ministries. I know I have a speech which is written, but I'll, stri I'll try to speak from my heart. Um, first of all, uh, Harriet, um, apart from Professor Kindiki being happy, I am sure my professor of law, uh, Professor Kameri Mbote, I think the first female professor from this country of law, will also be very proud of us. Because a few years ago, she took me through a course in a class called Women in the Legal Process. And um, that subject was extremely important because it used to be controversial. Uh, in class, the debate was always whether there is a problem with the law or the problem with the society when it comes to uh, the question of gender and women representation. I am glad that we are having this conference because this conference is happening as a result of a conversation we had with uh, Honorable Harriet uh, in my office over a cup of tea. And the question was, what can we do to make sure that there is better uh, conversation in the country in this sector that is perceived to be male dominated? And it didn't take one hour for us to decide. It was rather obvious that we agreed that there must be a conversation in this sector. And I immediately called the people I work with, and I told them, you work with the Office of the uh, Women's Rights Advisor, and we put together this team. Now, before I say much, I want to say this. If you feel you are not represented in this auditorium, and you feel your ministry, your department, your agency, your company, your organization is not represented in this auditorium. 
all the blame goes to me. All the blame, 100% goes to me. Because maybe I would have thought better, planned better. But let me say this. They say, if you don't wish to make mistakes, do nothing. Do absolutely nothing. We are happy to have made this mistake today because it's an inaugural meeting. The unfortunate issue that we don't have other agencies, other departments, is as a result of doing this and you know, making sure that it happens uh, as fast as possible. Therefore, my assurance is this, including my sister Susan, that you had to be called this morning. Um, we are sorry for that. It's because the people we gave the responsibility to do so perhaps had an oversight. But I have no doubt in my mind that they wrote a letter to your office because I saw the letter. Maybe it didn't. Um, but the point is made that we will correct this as we move forward. History records that Ms. Emily Roebling was the first documented woman in construction when in 1872, after her husband fell ill, she took over as a representative of his position of chief engineer to oversee the completion of the Brooklyn Bridge in New York City. Since then, more and more women have been registered as project managers, quality control managers, engineers, site supervisors, and designers, among others, in construction subsector, both in Kenya and elsewhere in the world. The gains we are currently experiencing in the construction industry are as a result of immense contribution of women and the injection of their expertise, experience, and technical know-how in the various disciplines in the sector. You know that the person who supervised the expressway, uh, for those of you who do not know, is Engineer Julia, who is here. And there are many other women who have done fantastic job, engineers, uh, architects, in various construction uh, sites in the country. Today, we gather to celebrate these women and to discuss and deliberate on the key challenges they face and mitigating factors that will level the playing ground for all. I'm going into 2022 report by DALBA and the International Development Research Center, only 3% of artisans are women while a paltry 7.3% of engineers registered by the Engineers Board of Kenya and 15.5% of contractors and 17% of registered quantity surveyors are women. It is also interesting to note that all the construction workers, of all the construction workers, only 18.7% have undergone formal training, while 81.3% acquired their skills through on-job training, according to the 2015 report by the National Construction Authority. To review the status of this sector and to make it more accommodating for women, my ministry, in collaboration with the Office of the Advisor to the President on Women Rights, have the pleasure of inaugurating this year's Women in Construction Forum under the theme, female lead, female built, female powered. This event, you can clap. This event brings together women developers, contractors, and all associates in the construction sector with the aim of promoting, recognizing, and advancing their role in industry in line with the bottom-up economic transformation agenda. Maybe I should pause there and ask, how many women contractors are here? I see by show of hands, you don't need to stand. Uh, yes, maybe you should stand actually. Yeah, if you don't mind, how many women contractors? This is, this is very, very impressive. Please uh, be seated, thank you, thank you very much. The forum 
is also a recognition of the immeasurable opportunities in the construction industry, be it in the construction of roads, ports and airports, houses, dams, etc., which women should tap into a way of scaling up the economic ladder. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the government recognizes the importance of diversity in the workplace and the increased representation of women is seen to greatly benefit the industry and the economy at large. It is in fact a challenge to all of us that we cannot pretend to want to build this country when more than 50% of the population has only a 3% representation in the most important sector of construction. It's a shame that to have a population that is more than 50% of the country is uh, merely less than 10% in all the sectors that are extremely important for the construction of the country. We, uh, we are committed to working with men and women in both private and public sector to attain gender equity in the workplace, promote women empowerment and their development in driving up the economic agenda. In this regard, the government, thought, through its various uh, MDAs, has adopted a gender mainstreaming policy to ensure that issues such as gender-based discrimination and gender-specific workplace needs are firmly addressed. The policy also calls for adherence to a one-third gender rule within its human resource recruitment practice which is expected to reflect across all the cadres of the office holders. You must have been embarrassed to see that all the DGs here are men. Yeah? Don't fear them. They will not deny you contracts. Just say yes. Yeah? Um, I was also embarrassed uh, when I joined the ministry and realized that it's not just the DGs. The top management of this ministry called roads and transport is a male-dominated area. Um, in all the roads agencies since inception, we've never had a female DG. In fact, I dare say we've never had a female deputy technical person and engineer. Um, it is my responsibility to make sure that in the next few years, God willing in this ministry, that I help us attain a situation where if we don't have the DG, at least the deputy DG who is a lady. In CARA, for example, Kenya Rural Roads Authority, we have two, we have the position of a regional manager is a very senior position. That is the same level as a deputy director, right? It's a deputy director. Out of 47, 47 regional managers, engineers, there are only two women. One, I think, is Makweni, or is it Kitui? Makweni, and another in Isiolo. The rest, I think they are almost 47. They are 40, 47. We only have two ladies. I have told CARA board and the management that in the next three years, that number must go beyond 10 engineers must go beyond 10 engineers. We have a similar situation in, 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 uh, in Kenya, and again, it is my duty, and I've spoken to the chair, she's a lady, and I believe I will convince the president to make sure that, and let me help convince publicly, so that he's under pressure, like I'm under pressure, that the next chair of CARA after Professor finishes his term, should be a lady, and, and in the same manner, 
the next chair of Kura should be a lady for the time being to make sure that uh, we make this sector. And I've no, I've no struggle convincing the president because he's the driver of this agenda. So it's extremely easy for me to make this case uh, to make sure that the next two chairs. The same situation uh, persists in Kenya and Kura, and we are going to make sure that we promote more women, technical women, the engineers, to take up very critical position. I know it is not just the roads department that I should be talking about engineers. My colleague Alice Waome presides over a sector that has many engineers in the water sector. I do not need to convince Alice to do, she knows what to do because she comes from that sector. Uh, 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 and it's not obvious that when you are a woman you support women. But it's also obvious that for Alice, who has been in the struggle, she knows what to do. And the same way, P.S. Daga, you have a duty to do in the transport department. Thank you, thank you, P.S. Uh, to make sure that in KPA, in KA, in Kenya Railway, and I know there are some vacancies in KA and Kenya Railway, and in Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, that women and technically qualified women occupy their rightful place in these positions. It will then be, become extremely easy for us to make decisions that we need to make uh, so that then we make uh, uh, this representation achieved. I believe that perhaps the next minister after me for roads and transport uh, will, be the, will be a woman. But please don't chase me, give me some time. Um, we know that we have also responsibility to make the workplace, the working environment, friendly for women. Friendly for women. And two things must happen. One, women must compete, have fair competing environment for positions. We are not saying you pick unqualified women. That's a lie. There are enough qualified women. As an immediate former lecturer in the university, I see women are doing better, and they were doing better. And I'm not saying that because Marcy, the chair of uh, uh, National Construction Authority, was my student, and she was a very bright student. But it's because it's the truth. If you look at the statistics, you will realize that women are doing better in the university. It must translate in the workplace that they must get their good working environment. What do we need to do? We need to do, deal with the barriers. And the first barrier is factors related to sexual harassment. I know you don't want to speak about that. That women have to go through, have to go through pressure to be promoted in workplace. You know, they have to, uh, uh, to get uh, opportunities in workplace. We must make the environment friendly for women to report all cases of sexual harassment in the workplace. And I'm saying this with utmost respect. I saw a documentary yesterday in one of the media houses of what women go through in athletics. And that is the same for women in the workplace. The policy, your gender ministry, and the office of, the, uh, of my friend Harriet should work towards making sure that policy is put in place. Number two is to make sure that the institutions of uh, 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 national construction in line with global practices and relevant legislation establish good working environment for women which includes mother's rooms with their premises to provide a private hygiene and fully equipped space for breastfeeding mothers to attend to their needs and continue growing in their career as they move forward. Uh, I hope uh, engineers here, now that you have this beautiful uh, auditorium, I didn't ask you, I hope there is a breastfeeding uh, corner for the women engineers and, and workers in this environment to, have, to be happy to come here with their, with their helps and breastfeed their children if they have to come back to work in good time. If it's not there, let's do something about it. The government is also working to ensure conformity to the 
access to government procurement opportunities, ACPO, requirement for youth, women, and persons with disability as an informative, affirmative action targeting the special groups. Let me say this, just one minute. One, it is not enough, in, uh, Mr. Ketch, it is not enough to have women registered and be ACPO. My ministry, and I'm sure the agencies have told them, must give contracts to women who are women. You know, we know that there are men who have registered companies as women companies. Now, in law, we say you must lift the veil. We must not only just award contracts on paper, we must also have an interaction with the contractors and know them and know who they are so that we have so many the other day, let me say this, the other day somebody came to my office and said, oh, you know, uh, as you know, they come. So it's no need to pretend here because we are in public. So they come and said, you know, I need your support. Uh, you know, I have a company. I want to do some construction. I said, okay, well, fine. We support uh, all contractors. He told me, but the good news is that my company is ACPO. So I told him, but you are, you are over 50 years and you are a man. There can never be an ACPO for an over 50 years. But he said, ah, don't worry. The company I have, I put my sister. My sister is a director. Oh, I said, okay, so what does your sister do? Tell me, she's studying abroad, don't worry about that. She's working there abroad. I want the DGs who are here to make sure that all the contractors who are given work you can see the face of the people working there, and you know they are women and who are doing their work as women. The other thing is that you must also make it possible for these women to do the real work. We were speaking to, with Engineer Jane earlier when we were taking tea, yeah? Thank you very much, Engineer. I, I love your passion and energy, including when you ran here it, it, it resonates from your. We were speaking and, and we were saying, we do not want our companies to say they have qualified to give contractors, to give women contracts. But the contracts they have given women is supply of tissue paper, pens, and stationery. We want women to be given real work to construct bridges, to do roads, to maintain roads. Are we together? And we don't want also women to be given roads in the periphery. That all because the woman give her some small maintenance of 10 million and give her to go and do somewhere in Wajia and at the Ajifunzie, Afanyafanya Kidogo, and then we say we are Akpo. Let me say, let me say this. The unfortunate thing is that when women are bidding for work, and there's a women company. There's always this attitude that the most important road, the most stronger road, the most visible road should be given to a man and the ones in Vichora Vichora should be given to a woman. You know the situation, the big story that happened with the Mombasa Road contracts, which was awarded by Kenna, and I want to congratulate Kenna, they're doing a very good job. Um, when they awarded the maintenance of the A8, the lower side, of the, the lower deck of the expressway, one of the companies was, uh, was uh, a woman, a woman run company. And so because she was awarded a company to maintain a very visible national road in Nairobi, uh, including many people, including the media, particularly the media, went to, the, to start a campaign and said, oh, you know, certain, certain lady was given work, a very important road, and probably she was given this road because of the husband, because the husband was a politician. Women have to suffer double. If your husband is a politician, 
she is okay to get work as herself, but if you get it, it's because of your husband. And nobody cared to dig the facts. Nobody even bothered to go for the facts, to ask themselves, when was this company registered? And, and for the first time, I'm sorry, I had to ask the DG, and this company, when was it registered? It tells me it was registered in 2009. How much work has it done between 2009 up to now? A lot of work. How does she complete her work? Yes, on time. Okay. I asked, when did the husband become a member of parliament? 2017, which is almost nine years after the company has grown. But because it sells, for every woman who is here to be given an award, to be a contractor, either she's a boyfriend of the, of the DG, she's a, girlfriend, she's a girlfriend of the DG, the girlfriend of the minister, she knows somebody in high office. But when men get it, they don't say, they don't say she's the boyfriend of the procurement officer. You know? This, this level of uh, discrimination against women must stop. Let women compete like every other person.